and sixth, Blessed John Pelengoto, Confessor, Third Order. John Pelengoto was born of a prominent family at Urbino in the year 1240. At the wish of his father, he became a merchant when he arrived at young manhood. But his efforts in business were directed not so much toward increasing his own profits or the fortune of his family, but rather toward benefiting others. He did not, however, pursue the occupation very long. With the consent of his father, he turned his back on a career in business and retired to a solitary place where he gave himself up solely to God, devoting his strength and his resources to prayer and almsgiving. <clears throat> he joined the Third Order of St. Francis and became a striking example of virtue to his contemporaries and fellow citizens, distinguishing himself by his exceptional practice of penance, piety, and charity. Finally, worn out by the austerity of his life, he was attacked with a serious illness. He closed a life replete with merits and good works, with a peaceful and happy death. It was on the 1st of June in the year 1304. His body reposes in the church of St. Francis at Urbino. On November 13, 1918, Pope Benedict XV approved the veneration which was paid to him since his death and has been increasing with time on account of the many miracles wrought at his intercession. On the Obligations of Labor and Capital It is particularly gratifying to read of a merchant who aimed not at acquiring profit for himself and his family, but rather at benefiting those with whom he had business dealings. Greed for money and the gaining of personal advantage at the cost of injury to others is rampant on every side in the commercial world today. And to what earthly end? Difficulty upon difficulty between labor and capital and a social order that is constantly in conflict. And to what purpose for eternity? Better is a dry morsel with joy, says the wise man, than houses full of victims with strife. Proverbs 17.1 Have you endeavored to be fair in your business dealings and even generous to your patrons? Or have you rather been out for your utmost advantage and thus added your share to the discontent that exists in the business world? The golden rule is by far the best standard also in the business world. If you are an employer, render to those in your service the kind of consideration that you would wish to receive if you were a laborer. You were perhaps a laborer at one time. What are the complaints you then had against your employers? Do you now deal with those whom you have engaged in your service in the manner in which you used to wish your employer would deal with you? St. Paul admonishes us, Masters, do to your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Colossians 4.1 If you are a laborer, you have the obligation to render the kind and amount of service that deserves the pay you are getting. St. Paul again says, quote, Every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. End quote. 1 Corinthians 3.8 To demand wages that are in excess of the service you are willing to render is an unfairness to those who have engaged your services. Moreover, conditions prevailing at any time must be taken into consideration in the demands you make. The demands must remain within reason, for the best-intentioned employers are at times reduced to straitened circumstances in their effort to meet the unreasonable demands of their employees. Have you reason to find fault with yourself in this matter? The gospel maxim applies equally well to you. 
Whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you also to them. Prayer of the Church. Grant, we beseech thee, O most merciful Lord, that spurred on by the example of blessed John, thy confessor, we may not only celebrate his festival, but also imitate his virtues. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed John Pelingotto, pray for Earth. us.